Hey guys, so today I'm going to be talking about entropy. This is the sort of uh, thermodynamics quantity used in physics a lot. It's a very important thing to understand because it ultimately guides the fate of our universe and is pretty much a universal concept in physics. So to get started, let's talk about some thermodynamics because this is how entropy really happened. So we start off with the second law of thermodynamics, which was formulated by, I believe, Clausius. Uh, Clausius. And basically, as it was stated, the second law of thermodynamics, which is very important, was that basically there is nothing that can perfectly transfer heat from one object to another. So basically you can't have a 100% efficient engine or heat transfer device. Now there was a lot of scientists that said, oh that's great, but that law is very specific. It refers to an engine, it refers to a heat transfer device. It's great that you can't have a one that's 100% efficient, but we would really like a law that applies more universally in physics. And so they came up with something called entropy that explains this law. And basically they said, uh, in the thermodynamic interpretation of entropy, they basically said entropy has to go up. Entropy always goes up. And so basically what happens is they're saying the reason, the way they got from the second law to entropy always goes up is they basically said, well, if you can't have 100% perfect engine, that means that due to conservation of energy, because you're going to lose some of that energy, it has to go into something. And they were like, well, it goes into something called entropy. So no matter what you do, entropy always goes up, basically. And so, well, what is entropy, right? So now we know entropy always goes up, and we know how they got there from the second law of thermodynamics. But what is it, right? How, what is entropy? Well, basically, sim simply put, entropy is disorder. So it's basically how ordered or disordered something is. And by go up, I mean it gets more disordered. So the universe starts out ordered, becomes disordered. So what do I mean by order and disorder? Well, to put simply, a clean room is ordered and an empty room and a, a dirty room is disordered, right? So same thing with uh, physics, right? Uh, a cold object where the you know molecules and atoms are not moving very much, you know they're not they don't have a lot of vibrations and stuff is ordered. A hot one where they're you know all over the place and zipping around like a gas is much more disordered. So ice is much more ordered than you know say water because ice water forms these. Uh, crystal structures, whereas in water, they're just going around all over the place willy-nilly. So that's what I mean by entropy. I mean order versus disorder. And so you can use entropy to explain a lot of common phenomena, right? So we all know that if you drop something, it falls to the ground and hit, hits the ground and it stops, right? But you never see something on the ground come back up and then to where, you know, to higher than it was before. Now, why does that not happen? Well, most people say gravity pulls it down which is true, but you can explain this via entropy, right? As you drop the rock, right, the potential energy of the rock is converted into kinetic energy, okay? So it has some kinetic energy just before it hits the ground, right? And then when it hits the ground, that kinetic energy is all converted into sound and to thermal energy, right, of the rock. So it hits the ground, the rock heats up, or whatever you drop will heat up, right? And so what, what's happening basically is you're converting this potential energy into kinetic energy, and this kinetic energy then into mostly thermal energy and a little bit of sound energy. So if you think about it, the entropy for this process has gone up because we have a rock, right? And then its molecules are moving somewhat, you know? It hits the floor, the thermal energy goes up, its molecules are moving more, so it's gone towards a more disordered state, a higher thermal energy state, okay? And because entropy like this will always go up, right? Uh, that won't ever happen in reverse because the entropy for that process would have to go down, right? So I know what you're saying. You're saying, well, I can take a rock, I can lift it off the ground, I can put it back up, right? Does that violate entropy? Not at all, because while you may have decreased entropy, you've done work. So basically, like, you can decrease entropy, right? You can make there be less disorder, but you have to do some work. And ultimately, your doing work will cause the entropy somewhere else to increase, and a net effect will be a net increase in entropy. Now keep in mind, this doesn't violate conservation of energy at all because you're taking energy that's already there and you're just converting it into another form, usually thermal energy, which increases the entropy. So what do I mean? Well, because entropy always goes up, right, heat will flow from a hot object to a cold object. It doesn't flow in reverse, right? So you would think that because of this, you couldn't move uh, energy, you couldn't move thermal energy from a cold object to a hot object to heat up the hot object and cool down the cool object more, you would think would happen in reverse. Well, no, this is exactly what happens in your fridge and your freezer, right? 
but the problem is your fridge and your freezer have to do work. And so because they're doing work, the net increase in entropy goes up because they're um, taking this energy and they're using it to do something else. So for, for instance, in your fridge, right? The entropy in your fridge may go down because it's taking it and it's cooling it down. But there's a lot of motors and stuff in your fridge and that, that's taking electricity which was produced by burning coal or, or uranium in a nuclear power plant or even wind which spins a turbine, which friction. And the net uh, effect of this will be that the entropy in the entire universe goes up. So even if the entropy in a, in a small uh, part of a system will go down, the entropy in the entire system in the entire universe will always go up. And in fact, in an isolated system, the entropy will always go up. Now, it's possible for a very idealized scenario that the entropy stays the same. There's no change in entropy, okay? But that's only for an idealized system. So basically, when there's no change in entropy, the process is reversible. So that means that you can do the process forward, you can do the process backward, either one is favorable in nature. Now, in reality, this doesn't happen because of the first interpretation of the second law of thermodynamics, which states there's nothing that's 100% efficient. Because nothing's 100% efficient, the entropy will always go up ever so slightly, and the reverse process will be unfavored, except you have to do work to do it, basically. When I say unfavored, it means work must be done. Now, the reason that, uh, and the, the interesting thing about entropy always going up is that we're taking uh, some energy that we have, say in potential energy or in kinetic energy that's available to do work, right? So if you drop, work is basically force times distance. So say you drop a rock, right, and it lands on the spring. The spring compresses, you've just done work. You've applied a force downward on the spring. The spring has compressed a distance. You've done work because that's force times distance, right? But what happens is that because entropy always goes up, say you drop it and it doesn't land on the spring, right? It lands on the floor. Well, you've just converted that potential energy to kinetic to thermal energy. That thermal energy is no longer usable to do work, right? You can't make this slightly hotter rock do any work now. So basically you decrease the amount of energy that's available to do work and you instead increase the amount of thermal energy. Now I know thermal energy is available to do work, but that's only when there's a difference in thermal energy and basically the temperature will tend to equalize very quickly. Uh, especially if you've dropped the rock from, you know, any noticeable height, you know, like a few meters or so, your rock's not going to heat up very much. There's not really going to be a whole lot of work done there. So the net effect is that there's less energy available to do work. And eventually the universe is going to end up in an extremely disordered state. So basically like a gas, that's a, the most disorderly state, or a, a plasma or something like that. And so basically everything's going to be at the same temperature because all of the energy in the universe is going to be converted into thermal energy because that's not available to do work, so you can't convert that back into other kinds of energy. And unless you do work, of course, but since there's no energy available to do work, can't do it. So the universe is going to end up being a very homogeneous mass and it's all going to be at thermal equilibrium and thermal equilibrium means it's just going to be at the same temperature so the entire universe at one point is going to be homogeneous and there's going to be no energy available to do work because of course you can't because of that uh second law of thermodynamics if you have everything at the same temperature there's actually no work that can be done you have to have a temperature difference so i know you're saying oh but a hot object you can drive a steam engine well if everything's like really hot it's at the same temperature, if there's no temperature difference, you can't do any work. And so this is what's called the heat death of the universe. Basically, it says the universe will end up just being one homogeneous mass, at all at thermal equilibrium. And there's nothing you can do about this. Right? And that sounds rather unfortunate, but that, that will take a while. I don't think humans will be around uh, by the time there's the heat death. But that's basically one of the, the factors that strongly influences how our universe will cosmologically eventually end. But uh, the other interesting thing about entropy, and while the th uh, heat death of the universe is probably rather unfortunate for anyone living in the universe, the good thing is for physics, entropy is extremely useful because in a system, right, in an isolated system, entropy will always go up, unless, of course, it's an idealized system, in which case it could stay the same, potentially, for a reversible process. But uh, because in real systems, entropy will always increase, entropy is what's called time's arrow, which basically says you can tell which way time is going because entropy is going up. So, for instance, let's make an analogy here. If you were watching a movie, right, and you saw the movie played in forwards and then reverse, you would be able to tell which one was forwards and reverse because of processes that happened. So, say someone dropped a mug on the floor and it broke, right? If they played it forwards, you would say, yeah, that's normal, the mug falls, it breaks. But if they played it backwards, the mug reassembles itself and goes up, you would say, that doesn't make sense, it must be backwards, right? 
And so that's because the, of the entropy. So basically when the film is playing forwards, the entropy is increasing because the mug is breaking into little pieces. It's no longer an ordered mug. And because it hit the floor, it's slightly hotter than it was before and the molecules are moving a bit more. Uh, but in the reverse, you take a very disordered mug because it's all broken and it's a little bit hotter and you make it more ordered and you all the pieces come together and it raises up. So you're saying entropy has gone down. So in physics, they call entropy times arrow because it tells you which way time's going. And this is a very, very, very useful process, and it's really one of the only things we know to tell us which direction time is going. Now, there are other processes in nature that actually favor one direction of time over the other, because in particle physics, basically, uh, we're always looking for asymmetries to explain why the universe is the way it is, so more matter than antimatter. Uh, or something like that, right? Why Why is the current state of the universe favored, right? And it's possible that certain processes are favored. So why is time favored to go in this direction it is, and why is entropy favored to go up is an interesting question that we don't exactly have the answer to. Um, but what the interesting thing is is that Regular particles uh, basically can move around in time forwards, right? But if you take a regular particle, say an up quark, and you move it through time backwards, it suddenly becomes an anti-up quark. So you can almost say that entropy can determine whether a particle is a particle or an antiparticle, because if the entropy is increasing, it's a particle because it's moving forward through time. And if the entropy is decreasing, then it's an antiparticle because it's moving essentially backward through time. So basically that says that a particle moving forward through time is a particle, and something moving a regular particle moving backward through time is an antiparticle. It's, it's uh, rather interesting to think about, but that all can be determined via entropy because it is time zero and it can tell you which direction time is moving. Now, there is this, uh, there is a second interpretation, and while I've been discussing the thermodynamic interpretation, which says entropy always goes up, there is a second interpretation which is uh, slightly more accurate, although they both describe the universe to an incredible detail, and they're both equally applicable in their own senses. But it's the probabilistic interpretation, which says entropy usually goes up. And now, that's interesting, because I've been telling you it always goes up, but basically, it says there's a probability that entropy, there's an extremely large probability that entropy will increase naturally, right? Basically, without doing any work, there's an extremely large probability that entropy will increase. But there is a slight, pretty much negligible, but a slight small probability that the entropy will decrease on its own without having to do any work on it. So you can think of it this way by flipping coins, right? Now, the, the usual state is that coins, you end up with 50% heads, 50% tails, right? And so if you were to flip thousands and thousands of coins, right, what, what would be the most orderly state, right? That would be all heads or all tails, because they're all the same, very ordered, right? What would be the most disorderly state, right? M you know, half heads, half tails, most, you know, a little bit of heads, a little bit of tails, you know, something that's not all homogenous, something that's a heterogeneous mixture of heads and, heads and tails, right? So... If you flip these coins, what are you going to get most of the time, right? Well, you, obviously, statistically, in a perfect world, you would get half heads, half tails, but you're going to get somewhere in between, usually between 60% heads and 40% heads or whatever, right? Which is a very disordered system. Now, it is possible that you get all heads or all tails, but for 300 or something coins, it's exceedingly unlikely that you'll get all heads or all tails. However, it is possible. Same thing with entropy. It is possible that heat will spontaneously, meaning without doing, without you having to do any work on it, flow from a cold object to a hot object, although the probability is really, really small. So that means there is a probability that, say, your mug that you dropped on the floor, your rock that you dropped on the floor could rise up, in fact, because and decrease the entropy, although the probability that such a thing happens is exceedingly small, however it is possible, right? Same thing is that a lake in the summer could spontaneously freeze because the heat would flow from the lake to the air and to the ground, even though the ground and the air are hotter, but the probability that something happens is so small. In fact, uh, the probability is about the same that monkeys type Shakespeare, basically, the entire works of Shakespeare. So pretty much negligible, although it is possible. So if you want to save on your refrigerator bill, you could say it is theoretically possible, although very, very unlikely, that uh, your refrigerator spontaneously cools itself, right? Now it's possible, not likely, I wouldn't suggest it. Your, all your food will go bad, but it is possible. So that's the statistical interpretation of entropy, which means, which still says the heat death of the universe will probably happen, right? But there is a tiny, tiny chance that, in fact, the heat death of the universe doesn't happen. Although, again, the chance is so small that I wouldn't count on it. But, yeah, that's kind of a different interpretation of entropy, and they're both saying the same thing, because basically 
one is saying entropy always goes up, and the other is saying there's an extremely large, like, 99.9999, you know, repeating percent chance that entropy goes up. Not repeating, because 99.999 repeating is equal to 100, but let's not get into that. But basically, there's an extremely large chance that entropy will go up. There is a very, very tiny, tiny, minuscule chance that entropy will go down spontaneously. Now, obviously, like I said, you can decrease entropy by doing work, but the net increase in the universe has been an increase in entropy. So... It's possible that, say, for an isolated system or in the entire universe, net decrease in entropy. However, the probability that something happens like that is exceedingly small, you know, even smaller than the probability of flipping 300 heads when you flip, you know, 300 coins, right? So that's entropy for you. Um, to sum it up, basically, second law of thermodynamics uh, was reformulated from basically no engine is 100% efficient to entropy always goes up. Statistically, entropy usually goes up. Uh, and entropy will tell you the direction time goes and is ultimately responsible for the death of the universe, at least in most people's interpretations of it, which is called the heat death. And entropy itself is basically disorder. So thanks for watching, and uh, I welcome you to increase the entropy of the universe yourself uh, by watching more of my videos in a random order. So thanks for watching.